Henderson teenager went from being a competitive athlete to barely being able to walk, bound by crutches and wheelchairs. It took doctors nearly a year to diagnose her disease and another year after that for her symptoms to completely stop. Tonight, 8 News Now anchor Kirsten Joyce with her journey and the help she wants to offer others. It was pretty scary at first. Lily Wool was, I mean, was 15 at the time her legs started twitching uncontrollably. She thought she pulled her hamstring playing soccer. And all of a sudden, what seemed like a little um, spasm or tremor started getting really aggressive. They rushed to the hospital in the heart of COVID in search of answers. And same thing, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Specialist visits, procedures, testing, extremely daunting as the weeks progressed. I mean, that was the hardest part and with COVID, every appointment it was, you know, you'd wait another four weeks between appointments and those four weeks as a 15 year old, stuck not doing anything. They booked an appointment with UCLA. Lily underwent an EEG, a spinal tap. Checking for MS, you know, something like that. And they basically pulled me outside and they said, we don't know what it is, but come back in 12 months. They pushed on a trip to Phoenix Children's Hospital, then a trip to the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota. Doctors there recommended physical therapy. It only aggravated the spasm. It made it worse. Eight months had passed since the twitching began and still no diagnosis. So every time you go somewhere, every time you, you get on a flight and you, you, you come back empty hand, it was just, we'd get off on the exit on 215 in Valley Verde and we would just start crying because we just, we didn't know what was next. I would sit at home, not able to really walk, not able to do school, not able to think straight. Meditation, yoga, and journaling helped Lily through the dark days. Being organized gave her a sense of control. I had every scan, every um, note from every single doctor. 30 doctors in nearly a year's time, all the while attending soccer practice. She couldn't play, but it kept her focused. Soccer was that socialization that kept me going and also just it motivated me to keep searching. And search they did, connecting with yet another doctor. He says, no, I think we can really help you. One more flight, this time to Utah, cautiously optimistic. So we talk for about four hours. He has every you know uh, specialist come in and meet with us separately. And then he says, go to lunch, come back. And we went to lunch. They all sit at this big table in the conference room and he slides a piece of paper across the table and he says, this is what we think your daughter has, which was CRPS. And it didn't matter what it was, we just all, at least we were crying, because it felt like the nightmare was over. It was such a relief. I mean, I've never been happier. Only about 10% of people with CRPS, complex regional pain syndrome, present with movement disorders like Lily's. The remainder have burning pain. Her unusual symptoms made it tougher to diagnose. Within a week of taking a high dose of medicine for nerve pain, Lily's spasms almost went away. But it would be another year and a surgery before Lily was fully recovered and working her way. I, my goal was always just to get back on the field. To playing soccer competitively at the university level. This now 18 year old will be headed to Clark University in Western Massachusetts to play soccer this fall. I'm really grateful and I just wanna give other kids and other people that same ability. Some strong character right there. Lily started her own nonprofit, CRPS Strong, to educate others and help raise money for research and clinical trials for the disease, as well as sponsor patients in need of treatment. She's also pursuing medicine, writing a children's book to help others focus on the positive during their treatments.